So this is Vicon IQ, the actual motion capture recording software. And now I'm playing in a uh, video file of our actor Heath moving around. The numbers 1 through 14 on the left side of the screen that I'm clicking through represent the 14 different cameras that this was filmed from. You can get the different angle from each camera. And er not every one of these is a great view, but that's okay because the computer can reconstruct the data into 3D without every single camera being a great view. But the more cameras you have, the more accurate and the faster the conversion from two dimensions to three dimensions is. At this point, you use Vicon to convert the two dimensional data in all the video files to three dimensional data that will actually move around. And here it is in 3D. You can see the gray markers up at the top are representations of the 14 motion capture cameras that we use to film the motion capture actor. And you'll notice that the actor's motion capture points are now connected with lines so you can tell what's going on and are moving in three-dimensional space. So you can tell he's doing a little spinning jump move. This move is for our character Stewie, who's a ten-year-old, throwing a water balloon at his older sister Marta in his ten-year-old melodramatic way. Next we will bring the data into Motion Builder, which is a separate program that actually allows us to apply the motion capture data to a character. So bring in the data, and there it is. You notice that the points look a little different because it's a different program, but they're still the same ones and they'll move the same way. So you can see he's about to do his, there's his look around and uh, his jump is coming up. There it is. Same spinning jump. Uh, next we're going to bring in a generic actor. And this actor is just kind of a blank gray person. It's mainly just so we can tell that the points aren't shaking around and making his body parts jitter. So now we'll bring in the uh, actor and tell it that the actor is Heath. There we go, it's Heath. And now we'll apply the data to the actor. Push OK, and there we go, it pops right into place. Now if I hit play, you can see the actor moving around, and now he's doing the same look. And now he's doing his jump. And you can actually start to get an idea for how the move will look in the end. And next we'll bring in our character. In this case, it's Stewie, the younger brother character. There he is. And you notice that he's in the T pose. That's the same pose that the actor was in. This is the generic pose that you use to bridge all the different layers of motion capture. Now we apply him to the actor character and hide the actor. We hit play. Now Stewie is doing the move. Looking around and getting ready to do his jump. There it is. Same jump for Stewie. So in contrast to a generic gray actor that we just saw moving around, we now have the low quality version of Stewie doing the jump. At this stage of cleanup, you can actually uh, change the position of Stewie's hands and arms. For instance, if he was supposed to open a door or flip on a light switch, you can make sure that his hands matched up with where he's supposed to be. You'll also notice things like his shoulder slashing a little too much and his hand intersecting with his head just a little bit and you can fix those things here too. And once you're done with that you bring it into Soft Homage. So here's the final version of Stewie in Soft Homage in his T pose and now we're going to apply the uh, animation to him and there it is, the beginning of the animation. Now hidden line removal mode lets you run the scene in its final version but kind of quickly because it's showing it at low quality. Uh, except this isn't quite running quickly enough. Nope. So we'll uh, put it into an even lower version into wireframe mode. And now it is. It's harder to see, but it'll give you an idea of the motion. And there he is doing his familiar jump. Kind of get him into a dramatic pose down here. Uh, there we go, that'll do. And uh, try to frame him up nicely. And uh, that'll work. Now we'll go to render all layers. 
and now it will actually show you uh, a still frame of Stewie in the absolutely final version what he will look like during the animation it's very hard in 3D to see at the same time the motion and the final model because uh, it, it runs very slowly until you're completely done and have rendered out the entire animation uh, but you can look at them each individually like we are looking in wireframe mode at the motion and now we're looking at the high quality rendered mode at the uh, actual still frame and now we'll go into the kitchen because Stewie was just kind of in blank space and here's our kitchen you can see it has all the basic amenities stove and refrigerator and all the like just to get a good idea of how it looks spin around a little bit and now we'll bring in Stewie and there he is uh, this is the same file we were using earlier except to put him in kind of not quite a nice nice place standing next to the uh, counter there we want him more over on the other side of the counter so we'll put him over here and there we go uh, that ought to do uh, just right here alright try to find a nice camera angle we'll be able to see the whole jump from and that ought to work and uh, it's going very slowly now because we not only have Stewie but we have the entire kitchen trying to play so we'll put it into wireframe again and there it is it's a little harder to see but uh, it'll give you an idea so there he is looking around and uh, same familiar jumping move that we've been seeing for quite a while now. Uh, and there he is going backwards and forwards. We'll get him into the dramatic pose again. That's the same one as before. About. And uh, try to get a good camera angle on him. And go back into hidden line removal. And oh, we're on the other side of the wall. So I've got to pull in just a little and there we go Just, uh, and then we'll go set up the render options we're going to actually render out a full version of the entire kitchen so this all looks good and uh, just move this up here and we'll push go so here it comes and now what's actually happening is it's trying to figure out the lighting for the entire kitchen scene so you'll see a rough pass where it's going to go through and change this wireframe mode into a colored mode but it's as you can tell it's it's pixelated it's not quite the exact sharp version that you'd want uh, once again I'm fast forwarding a little bit here uh, because what it's doing is it's actually calculating using the color of objects and their proximity to other different colored objects what color light to display at each individual little part of the uh, frame so it's going through and it's saying when it hits Stewie's shirt we'll do kind of a green light on his pants we'll do a more gray light and, uh, just fast forward a little bit more here it goes you can see it's stepping through and this takes quite a long time and you have to do this for every frame of the final animation and that's why render times take such a long time uh, so there it is and now that it's uh, gotten done with the light pass now it's going through and you can see in the upper left corner it's much more sharp it's passing down the left side it's doing the final pass now and this is what it will actually look like when it's done rendering now here is the final product of the whole render for this frame and when we are finished and have repeated this process for every frame We'll have the whole five and a half minute animation of Marta and Stewie walking around and interacting in the kitchen, learning about science.